Timekeeper. Welcome to the most anticipated debate on YouTube. The man that I'm about to introduce is a man who wears many hats. He's known as a breath of fresh air in the YouTube boxing community. His voice has become one of the loudest voices in the community for his controversial but factual perspectives. Boxing fans all around the world recognizes him for his knowledge, credibility, credentials, and integrity. In the business of boxing, he is the founder of the nonprofit organization named Dad's Overcoming Losses Living Above Reproach Incorporation. He is certified as a credit counselor, tax practitioner, experienced full-time entrepreneur, trained as an amateur boxer, and licensed as a boxing manager in multiple states in the country. He is the author of these words. You're going to need to get you a pair of these. The viewership is increasing exponentially. He is the author of these words. Roll the tape. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the jury, members of the Roll the Tape film crew, I introduce you to the undisputed, undefeated, hottest manager on YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, he is Manager Marty. Hold on, Timekeeper. Hold on. As the viewership is increasing exponentially, hold on, Timekeeper. Before I let you go, I would like for you to please, if you can, grace us with a 10 bell count, please. Thank you very much, timekeeper and ring announcer and referee. If you know anything about this business and this sport, you know what the 10 bell count represents. Now we have Mr. Rick Glaser here. I am going to allow him to give his own introduction because many of you may not know exactly who he is and the contributions that he has made in this sport of boxing. And I want to give him the proper opportunity as a guest on this platform. Mr. Rick Glaser, the floor is yours, my brother. Um, I'd like to start out by saying, uh, Manager Marty, thanks for having me on tonight. Uh, we've been trying to get on here for several weeks now. It just didn't work my schedule and your schedule, but here we are. Well, um, besides being Rick Glazer, I've uh, been in the professional boxing business. Uh, Full-time is my exclusive uh, sole um, livelihood uh, since 1991, 32 years. My company is called GlazerBoxing.com, and we are a 24/7, 365 worldwide provider of quality supplemental services to the professional boxing business globally. Like I said, since 1991, and my clients include TV networks, uh, st um, streaming companies. Uh, promoters, managers, attorneys, casinos, online casinos, and um, anybody that, you know, anybody that needs professional advice in, in boxing, negotiating skills, career paths for fighters, whatever. All my stuff is white collar. Um, you know, I don't go to boxing gyms or anything like that. And um, 
I do this every day, 24-7, 365. Like I said, it's on everything I do. And i um, happy to be here tonight with you and fire away. All right. Thank you for that introduction. The viewership is increasing exponentially. I want to salute everyone engaged in the chat. I want to salute all the viewers watching me live in living color. We're going to have an entertaining dialogue with Mr. Rick Glaser. And of course, because he has a lot of experience in this business, I can assure you that you are going to be educated by something that you do not know about the business and the sport of boxing. Let's cut right to the chase, Rick. You called it right. We've been trying to get this thing together between you and I to have a dialogue in front of the audience, live and living color. But as you said, our schedules were conflicting. I just want to give the new audience just a small little background of how we got here just today. Um, just very brief. I believe you are friends with a man named Justin. We know him here on YouTube as Gary or G-Man. And mm -hmm. he is the one. I'm sorry. Yes, that's correct. He's the one that yes. made it as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. He's he's the one that brought your name up on this platform. He called out Richard O'Neill on this platform, and he called out me on this platform live in front of the audience. And he said that um, that Rick Glaser would want to debate you. I said I don't know too much about Rick, but you know Rick is more than welcome to come on the platform. We can have a dialogue. To my understanding, and to the understanding of the viewership. You do not like Al Heyman. You do not like PBC. I am not sure if you are a Terrence Buck Crawford fan or supporter, but I know that you have a disdain for Al Heyman and PBC. So let me back off and start there. What is it about PBC or Al Heyman or both that you do not like about the practices of Al Heyman and or PBC? Well, let's start with Al Heyman. I dealt with him when he first entered boxing in the year 2001, 2002. I had a very bad experience with him. I told him something wasn't going to happen up front when he asked me to do something for him. I said, it's impossible, uh, literally impossible. You're asking for something that can't be done. He And um, he said, just try. I tried, and it didn't work, and I got chastised for it. And um, I don't play that game with anybody. I gave him my advice up front. I told him it won't work. It won't happen. He didn't listen. And then he got mad at me. Um, I'm the one that talked him, him into Ver Vernon Forrest and uh, Shane Mosley. He didn't want the fight. He thought it was too risky because he had Vernon Forrest. I'm the one that talked him into the fight. I'm the one that brought uh, Vernon Forrest and Char Charles Watson, who was his partner in Vernon Forrest. And... Um, Al Heyman to the table uh, to uh, introduce him to Lou DiBella and uh, got the ball rolling with the whole deal. And then in the meantime, was they asked me to do something for them, including Lou DiBella, but Heyman was the one that was really turned out to be the motherfucker about it. Um, that's what, that was the start. Then he starts up PBC with 900, basically was 900 million, between 550 and 900 million dollars of borrowed money. He changed the whole, he ruined the whole business platform of boxing. Okay. And how he did that, it was he used that money to grossly overpay the fighters to fight nobodies. And then when they, then when he ran out of money, he couldn't pay him to fight somebody's. And he ruined the whole competitive uh, point of boxing. And that's why we have so much ducking today. That's why the fighters don't fight often, because if he can't pay, if, because he can't pay them millions of dollars, uh, they don't fight, and they just sit there. Okay, so he's ruined the business as and the sport as we once knew it. Now you may not agree with that, but everybody in the business of professional boxing feels the same way I do. I am far from a lone ranger. Even his proponents, the people that like him, agree that, 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 that he's fucked the business up. So I'm not a lone ranger here. Everybody feels the same way that's in the business. And let me say another thing before we go any further. There's a big difference between the sport and the business of professional boxing. The sport is what you see on TV, okay? The, the trainers, most managers, 
and the fighters are in the sport. The, the full-time promoters, the bigger managers, guys like me, matchmakers, most of us are in the business. There's a big difference between the business and the sport. Okay. And, and, and that's why I always say the business and the sport of professional boxing. Somebody tells me they're in the business. No, you're in the sport. I'm in the business. So continue, Marty. Yes. I definitely appreciate the background. Um, and my audience know the differences between the sport and business because I've okay. been on YouTube, you know, telling them that. So I appreciate you echoing my sentiments. You had mm -hmm. used the statement called nobody. And I want to make sure that the fans understand what you mean so that they won't misinterpret you uh, as, as you know, lowering this, the, the, uh, the accomplishments of a fighter. When you say that Al Heyman and PBC overpaid fighters to fight nobodies, can you give us well, an that, example? That means out, out bet fights where you can't even get a line in the fight or the line is 30 to 1, 25 to 1, 30 to 1, 40 to 1, stuff like that. Okay. And he took the competitive nature out of the fight and fighters fighting regularly. The average champ, the champions for PBC average one fight every world title fight. This is the champions now, the world champs, not interim titles now. That doesn't count. World champions. One point for every 14 months, they fight one time every 14 months on an average. That is horrible. Okay, horrible. Most champions today fight twice a year, once every six months, just to give you an idea. Well, that is true, and I actually had a brother on this platform in my panel uh, repeat the same words you did, and other content creators who really don't understand the business of boxing, they repeat what you said. Um, but the thing about it is we know, looking at the blueprint that Al Heyman has with Floyd Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather fought once a year if he wasn't fighting a rematch. Well, well hold, hold it, hold it, hold it. That's what I. That, that's a legendary figure. That's one guy. That's not boxing in general. There's there's seventy six champions. That's one guy. Right. That what you can't go by one guy. That's like saying Richard Petty won two hundred NASCAR races. Well, the other guy's not good. He only won forty. Well, forty's a ton. You right. can't. No, no. Right. You no, know. You understand. Okay, so I'm, you can't go by that. You have to go by the general consensus of fighters, what he's doing. Another thing is Floyd Mayweather was not PBC. He made himself known that he was not PBC. Remember something. Floyd finished in 2015. PBC started only in 2015. Okay, right. so he was not a PBC fighter, but continue. No, Right. I'm, I no, I know say, you didn't say that. You, okay. I know you didn't say that, but I'm just declaring that. Okay, continue. Right. right. So, so the reason why I brought up Floyd Mayweather, and I'm not comparing all the other fighters to him, what I was basically saying was the blueprint to have fighters after Mayweather fight once a year. I mean, we have to put this in perspective too, Rick, and you know this better than I do. Uh, Al Heyman manages hundreds of fighters, and so it's pretty much hard for all of those fighters to get the same opportunities uh, to fight every six months when all of them are not even champions. And I'm sure you would agree with that part. A hundred percent. But l let me explain. He fought once a year when he became a superstar. He's not giving these guys a chance to become superstars because they're fighting so infrequently. And that's killing their marketability. Spence was out, I think, 13 months by the time he fought for the, he only fought twice in four years. I know he had a car accident. I know about COVID twice in four years. Jamal Charlo, he was supposed to fight last year. He had personal problems. He still hasn't fought in over two years. Okay. They're not fighting. Jamal Charlo, the 54 pounder, he hasn't fought in 13 months. It's right. it, it's and he's still two months. He's still basically two months away from fighting again. The average one. You can't build a superstar on once every fourteen months. If they're already a superstar to develop, then you can fight once a year. But they're not right. getting to that point. Name a guy that he's developed that's a superstar status. Nobody you since. You ready for me to answer that, Rick? Sure. All right, before I answer that question, 
let me put this in perspective. You said Jamal Charlo, he had personal problems that had nothing to do with PBC. You brought no. up. No, no, you, no, 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 no. I agree. You, but the but the personal problems happened after he was already an actor for 14 months. Right. But I'm he just didn't saying, fight for 14 months. That is correct. Don't forget his okay. brother, Jamel. Jamel had a hand injury. You, right. you put that in perspective. And, and, right. and to answer your question, you said name a fighter that he's developed. I can name one right now. His name is Javante Tank Davis, who fought six months apart, once in January. Actually, three or four months apart, once in January, once in okay. April. And okay, so just, you and just said, I agree. Yeah, okay, 100%. Okay, but he drew 61,000 pay-per-view buys in January. Okay, he, he when he fought Isaac Cruz, he drew 52,000 buys, and he just did a huge number. Ryan Garcia was a major part of that. Okay, a how, major, how, ma what? How many, how many, how many pay-per-view buys did Ryan Garcia and St. Davis sell? Well, over 1.2 million. Awesome. Right. Now you said 60,000 for 61,000 for for actor Luis Garcia and Tank Davis in January did 61,000 buys. When he fought Isaac Cruz they did 52,000 buys. That's right. what I'm telling you. Got you. Now the fans okay. are going to ask this question. I have a question right. on that as well. Sure. Where are you right. I know that you're not a part of PBC. Where are you right. getting the, the numbers from? My so numbers you know? my numbers have come since January so I'm sorry, June of 2004 when Arturo Gaddy and Floyd Mayweather fought. I do I have a relationship with a TV uh, with a LA based attorney who's in the TV industry. He does contracts um with TV, with uh, sponsors, he brokers deals, and he's been in the TV business full time his whole life. That's all he's ever done is TV, and um, I've been a uh, expert for him on uh, several occasions in um, in boxing related things that he's dealt with because he does not only TV but entertainment law. Period. Okay. And that's where the those numbers come from. So they're very Got accurate. Got you. Okay. We'll say they're accurate. Mm -hmm. I do have a question on that, though. I'm not, sure. and I'm not being disingenuous about this, Rick. No, uh, what would, fire what away. Would the, yeah, yeah. What would the attorney's motive be of telling you that, knowing that you don't like Al Heyman and PBC? There's nothing to do with any, mo any motive. We're, we exchange favors. I do things for him. He does things for me. He doesn't charge me. I don't charge him. Oh, I see. Okay, so you, so he's not volunteering the information. You're asking about it. No, no, no. He volunteers after every pay-per-view show. He just he just gives it to me, you know, because mm -hmm. he knows he, he, this is something we've been doing this for nineteen years now. I see. So you keep okay. track of you keep track of. Okay, since you keep in track of the numbers, do you? Because I've I've been trying to ask this question for the last what? I don't know. Not not for you, Rick, but I'm just saying. I think it was like eighty three weeks or something. I've been asking this question, and you sound like you're good with numbers. Do you know how many pay per view buys that BLK did, Prime did with uh, David Evanesian versus Terrence Crawford? No, because they never released them. But wh what I was told was somebody told me on uh, uh, in in this country they did forty nine thousand, and with overseas they did like a hundred nineteen. I believe was the number. One hundred seventeen thousand. One hundred seventeen. I think it was forty nine United States and one hundred seventeen overall. Mm, but but I don't know that. To, I don't know that to be a fact. That's what I was told, but didn't come from my source. No. Because they never okay. reported the numbers. They never reported them. But the source, your attorney, can't he go over there and get access to all of those numbers? Over no, there not, the no, they, they, they have, they, no, they weren't reported. We looked into it and they were reported. Remember something. They have their own app and they're putting out their own stuff. They're not going through any providers. You understand right. what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. absolutely. I do. I just okay. want the audience to understand you uh, okay. as well. When you, when Very you good. Talk about yeah, when you talk about going through the providers, obviously mm -hmm. this is how you gain access to knowing what those four numbers are. Mm -hmm. What was your assessment of the one point two million dollars that you say that Ryan Garcia did? With one one point two million buys. One more, yeah, right. One point two million buys. Right. Uh, that that uh, Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia did. My assessment was it was a big fight. Uh, Ryan Garcia's got 10 million uh, Instagram followers. 
He's on all kinds of talk shows, TV shows, radio shows. He's a mega draw. And um, that really, that was the big push with that fight. And it was a great fight. It was a fight that people wanted to see. And it was, and it was a, a, a um, cultural, um, you know, clash between a, a black American and a, and a Mexican American. And those are the ones that draw the big numbers. That is correct. You're absolutely correct. Now, I did hear through the grapevine, and I don't have any sources at all, but I heard through the grapevine that those numbers of 60,000 were not true with regards to uh, Tank Davis and Hector Garcia. Yeah, they, they were absolutely true. What's his name tried to say? That was just the streaming number. Uh, Steven Espinosa, when he was asked by it's the total buys by consumers on all platforms. That means digital. That means home. That means uh, satellite. Uh, I mean, home cable, satellite, and streaming. It was sixty-one thousand buys. So, uh, so wait a minute. So, Stephen Espinosa disagreed with your source, the attorney. Well, of course, he's going to disagree. Of course, what do you think he's going to admit to doing sixty-one thousand home? But he did admit that didn't do anywhere near the two hundred thousand rumored figure. I see. He did. He did say that. All right, let me get these super chats. Hold on one second, Rick. This is customary on this channel. No we problem. Have all, all eyes low. Thank you for your contribution and your support to the channel. I got my guy, day one supporter, Mr. Pragmatic. He says, support for the channel. Keep bringing the great content, Marty. Much love and respect to you, Mr. Greg. I mean, Mr. Prag. Sorry about that, Mr. Prag. And then my guy, another day one supporter, Matthew Thomas. Thank you for your contribution and your support to the channel. He says, let the teacher teach. And he was not referring to you, Rick. He was talking about me because they know what I do on this channel. Now, that, that's why I'm here to help. Thank you. Now, Mr. Rick, let's get back to something you said. You and I sure. both know the business of boxing very well. Of course, you have a lot of uh, more experience than I do when it comes to the game. But uh, I'll tell you, I'm one of the shrewdest guys in this business. Now, we know the business. You mentioned the word nobodies. You said earlier that, you know, PBC, Al Heyman, the promoters, et cetera, have put their, their fighters in the ring with nobodies and overpaid them. Isn't it customary that all promoters put their up-and-coming stars in the ring with, quote-unquote, as you call them, nobodies to build them up? No, that's that's not my was not never my point. Is it customary point, though? Is it customary in the business? Yes, but that wasn't All my right. point. Okay. My point was that he overpaid his fighters greatly to fight nobodies. Was the statement hey, that sounds I made. like a good idea. That sounds like a good thing, if you ask me. No, it it, it wasn't a good thing because now it backfired on him. He ran out of money. PBC owes nine hundred million dollars to White Owl Reed. Okay, that's public. You do you do know that, right? That is public. Yeah, yeah, that might be public. I don't really get into the the, the financial pockets of other people because the bottom line well, is these you, fighters you are should, getting... if, if you're talking about the business of boxing, you should know that Al Heyman blazed through nine hundred million dollars of money, and it caused a whole calamity in the business where his fighters don't want to fight for what 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 nor, what, what he can pay him now because he ran out of money that's well, why they're only fighting and and guess what rick they still signed terrence crawford they still signed canelo the fighters that's under their no banner, no, they no, still no. They did, no no they still incorrect. Get paid. In, in, no incorrect 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 right. showtime What's, signed them huh? show showtime let me explain let, let, let me explain. Don't interrupt me. Go ahead. Okay. Steven Espinosa recently said that Terrence Crawford is not a PBC fighter or a Showtime fighter. He's got two fights and he's out of there. Okay. He may stay. He may go. Okay. The fact is Showtime is financing everything PBC is doing now. Okay, PBC ran out of money. The reason no. why Jamel, the reason why Jamel didn't fight the Polish the guy from Poland was because he thought he was gonna get his typical two and a half million or three million for the fight. And Heyman offered him seven fifty and then he refused to fight. 
Okay, that's what happened because there's no money to fall back on to overpay these guys like there was before because the 900 million dried up. Did that money ruin the business and sport and it ruined the mentality of fighters wanting to fight competitive fights? Think he was going to get that Polish guy who can't fight a lick, okay, going to get two and a half or three million to fight him. Heyman, Heyman and Showtime wanted to pay him 750 and he balked. How do That's you know what's that, going Rick? on. What? No disrespect. I'm asking you. How do you know how much they was trying to pay this guy? How do I know who, who's paying it? What? Hey, trying to pay who? I be, I did Abu Abu Abu. Come on, Rick. You smarter than that. Abu, I'm asking what? you a direct question. How do you know that Al Heyman and Steven was trying to pay this guy a certain oh, amount of money? Oh, Jamel, you, Jamel Charlo told people. He told multiple people. Multiple people. I didn't he hear him say off. that. That's why I'm asking you. He was pissed off, told people, told multiple people, actually. Well, Rick, it sounds like you know a lot about PBC. Why don't you just go work for them? You know enough about their business. I, I, don't, need, I don't need to work for PBC. My business is ultra, ultra successful. I don't, do not need PBC. I don't need any one account. I have 47 clients. They're all happy, and I'm happy. I'm, I'm, and I'll tell you what, I'm even happy that you're doing well. The thing Thank about you. it. You're, no problem. You're welcome. The thing about it that 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 might sound misleading when you say that and you did agree with me that you know promoters do have fighters that they're having up in the you know up in the up and coming ranks to pay to pay absolutely, pay but they don't overpay Nobody. their fighter to fight them. Hey, the bottom line is the fighters got paid. Isn't that you would you and I in the business for for the fighters? No, get paid? no, no. I'm oh, not. Oh, that's what I'm, I'm in the, the business to get. That's well, why I'm in the business. Well, that's why I'm, I'm not a manager. That's paid. that's why I'm not a manager. Thank you. So you're not. It's, a manager. it's not you, healthy. It's not healthy for the sport when the fighter gets overpaid. I know it's oh. not. You know why? That's the same thing Bob Aram said. That's because y'all can't get a piece of it. That's it. Please. It, Come on, totally, Rick. We know the totally, business, Rick. Totally incorrect. We know totally the business, incorrect. Rick. We know the business. I'm gonna protect the integrity of the business, but you know what I'm trying to say, Rick. No, you're you protect integrity of business by not overpaying people, um, overpaying people ridiculous amounts of money. Hey, they, the fighters got paid. It's all about the fighters getting paid, not but, the but, but the, the fighters are the fighters aren't fighting often enough to overcome the difference. That's the problem. Hey, they make it, it happen. And, and guess what? You seen what Showtime did? Like you said, they opened their checkbook up, and they got the deal done. Isn't that the same thing that Top Rank does, uh, Rick? They get the money from ESPN. Same Absol thing. A hundred percent. There's a hundred percent. What's the but problem? But the difference is the difference <laughs> is Top Rank does sixty six shows a year. Uh, uh, what does PBC do? Eighteen. And, and guess what? You know this, and I said this before. You know ESPN budget is not bigger than Showtime's. And you know that, Rick. ESPN show is budget is much bigger than Showtime's. They don't get paid over there like Showtime and them do. What are you talking about? The Aaron fighters does that think fight, the fighters uh, that fight on ESPN Plus and regular ESPN do not get paid for the same price point over there at Showtime pay per view. We both know that. I know you're cool with them over there. You did business. No, with no, 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 no. Years. What you're talking about apples and oranges. You're talking about a company that only does 18 shows a year and in PBC and Showtime. When you're talking about a company that does 66 shows a year in top rank, they can do 66 shows. Their fighters are getting paid less. Hello. Okay. You just said but, a but, you're, issue. but you're but you're you're looking at it from a democratic standpoint. I'm looking at it from a Republican. I'm about the business. You're about the, you're about the sport at the fighter. No, no, I'm about the business and the. Fight. No, you're not because you, you're, you're siding credit. with the. You're siding the fighters overpaid. It's all right. No, it's fucked up the business. You don't see it. I see it. What it is is let's keep it 100, Rick. You got 40 years in the business and you've been around since Don King, right? You've done work for Don King, correct, Rick? Absolutely. All right then. So you understand the economic situation that fighters have been in. For all of these years, hit. you're 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 missing you, you're missing you're, talk, you're missing the point. You're missing the point. You're missing the point. Let me talk. You're missing the point. You just cut me off. You're Rick. saying me what you're saying is. Let this me finish is what my statement, saying. Rick. Oh, okay, let me finish, finish my statement. I got finish. you. I, finish. I, we're gonna be fair here. What I'm talking about, because you're saying is is effing up the business 
when fighters mm -hmm. are getting quote unquote overpaid, overpaid by your standard, not by the standard of the budget, but by your standard now and the competitive standard, right? No, I, 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 no, they're overpaid by the result. That's why they're only fighting once every 14 months. No problem. But we know okay. in this business, and you know better than I do, being in this business for over 40 years, working with Don King, Bob Aram, and the rest of those guys who have a lot of tenure in this business, that so many times the fighters were not getting paid their just due, and the promoter was uh, eating off the fatted calf. They were the only ones benefiting financially, and the fighters wasn't. You agree with that, right? No, I don't agree with that at all. Mike Tyson got four hundred million dollars. He 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 went broke on his own volition because he's overspent. He okay? got four hundred million. He Oscar got, De La Hoya is worth three hundred million today. Aaron paid him very well. He saved his money. No, I, I'm not talking about the management of their finances. I'm talking about the contracts that lock these fighters in, and they're getting paid uh, under the under the economic standard. And under so, what? Uh, under uh, under under what? Um, when uh, Terence Crawford fought Sean Porter, he paid him six million and four million respectively. Heyman took the four; he couldn't even go to purse bids. Well, uh, first bids. Did Aram overpay him? Terence Crawford was under contract with Top Rank. We already know what his contract stated. What I'm basically right. getting at is, what I'm basically getting at is, for so many decades, these promoters have been making buku money hand over fist, and the fighter was left out to dry making quote unquote under their market value and you know that to Ooh. be true for Ooh. no i don't know that's all a true right ali and frazier got five and a half million dollars a piece what do you way back then that's like fucking 50 million today right what are you but talking you know, about how many ali's did we have to make that kind of money ali there, there, was, a, there was a lot there was a lot of guys there was there was a lot of guys there was frazier foreman sugar ray leonard roberto duran they and all made millions what? of dollars right but that was in an era let's use ali since you used ali ali okay. was the first one and then you had sugar ray leonard who had who, who made forty thousand in his first fight the next era so it's always one or two fighters that make the big bank in each era what i'm talking about right. overall overall from the perspective of the business of boxing overall all of these fighters were not making the money that they really earned. They were being lowballed. And so what I'm saying to you is if a fighter is getting overpaid according to your standard or the business standards of boxing, so what? They're putting their life on the line. You're, 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 missing, you're missing the point going back to your original statement about making superstars. If you're paying a guy $3 million and he's fighting over every 14 months, he gets lost in the shuffle of everything else, of all sports. It, it doesn't mean anything. If you're fighting two to three times a year and you're taking close to market value, let's, so let's say you're taking a million to a million and a half, that's how you build a star. When Floyd was coming along, he was fighting three, three times a year. Oscar fought five times in one year and fought three and four times most year. That's how you make a star. Right. Okay, I agree with you. I well, agree with you. Mike not, did it with, too. with that economic, with that, with, with Heyman's economic, um, uh, what, whatever, what, I don't know if it's called it a plan or what you call it. When you're fighting once every 14 months, you can't, you can't make stars. They're they're out too much. So instead of paying a guy three million once every four every um every uh 14 months you fight them twice a year and you pay them 1.5 billion a piece and you build up a star that's how you. you do it PBC, well, they're not doing it i got you pbc have built more stars than top rank and Della Hoya's company golden boy promotions put together and rick even you know that no you're you're wrong golden boy is the one that started made all those guys stars don't look at me funny like that I'm looking okay. at you funny like that because you know Al Heyman had all those guys on the contract over there with De La Hoya, Rick. They, Get a man they were De La Hoya's fighters. He stole the fighters and had to pay no, a lawsuit of four. He, and guess what? He lost that lawsuit. Golden Boy lost that lawsuit, Rick. No, they and didn't. You know that. No, they didn't. You're talking about two different lawsuits. So what lawsuit you talking about? $40 million when he sued Richard Schaefer and Heyman. He lost 40. The reason why he lost the second, like he paid $40 million. The reason why he lost the second lawsuit is because he already won the first one. And once you won the first one and alleviated the second one automatically, it was tossed out, uh, tossed out for that reason. And guess what? Okay, because 
Don King stole fighters too. You know, you know this is the nature of the business. If a fighter want to go with somebody else, they just go with them. You know that. No, right? there, there, there's such thing as called contracts. I agree with you. Okay. I agree with you. Oh, I agree with you. Everybody okay. got to be obligated to that contract. What I'm saying is okay. it's, it's still up to the fighters. And when the fighters do that, it does put the competition in limbo. All I'm saying is that PBC fighters are not the only one fighting once a year. You know what? I'm doing way too much talking, Rick. Let's take Terrence Crawford over at ESPN. When he fought mm -hmm. Sean Porter, right, he fought once a year. Nobody say nothing about him. He fought Cal, Bro Cal Brook, he, and then a year later he that, fought It's Sean not Porter. true. That's not true. He, he turned – let me talk. He turned down fights. He turned down Who? fights. That Who? Aaron Crawford did. Not because of the opponents, not because of the opponents, because he didn't want to fight. Name two fighters he turned down. Can you please? He do didn't. That? I just said to you, he didn't turn down fighters. He turned down fights, opportunities, dates. Give us two. They never. Give us two I fights. I just that he turned said, down. are you fucking stupid? Hey, are you Rick. a clown? Hey, Rick. I, hey, Rick. I said to you, listen to me. Hey, I Rick. said oh, to you, oh, he turned oh, down Rick. fights, not oh, fighters. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 Rick, I'm going to stop your mic right now, bro. I don't know what you're doing, nobody else channel, Rick. Don't, don't unmute. You better jump off. You better jump off, Rick. You better, you, you better jump off. I ain't them. I ain't, yeah, he, he said all that and jumped off. He said all that and jumped off. I ain't them. I represent my city well. I represent myself well. I ain't them. Ain't nobody going to come on this platform and talk crazy to me. I muted that boy for yeah. He he did the right thing. He jumped right off. He jumped right off. Hold on, y'all. Hold on for one second. Yeah, we don't we don't listen. We don't do no sucker move over here. We men over here. I don't let nobody disrespect me. Then he gonna jump off. Hold on for one second. Yeah, we know what to do. Hold on. Hold on. We gonna get him on the line now. Yeah, we gonna. We are gonna try to see if we can get this that good this guy on the line now. Hold on, y'all. I'll be right back. Hold on. Wrong with you, boy? We live now. We live. Hold on for a minute. We gonna call him on the phone. We gonna call this this guy on the phone. Please leave your message for Rick Laser. Yeah, Rick, you know who this is, Manager Marty. Hit my jack. You in Buffalo, New York, right? I can come see you. We can talk in person like men. Hit my jack, man. Call me back, bro. That's how we going to do that. Yeah, I know where you at in Buffalo. We come we come talk like I'll be there in the morning. Ain't no problem with me. No problem. We having a healthy dialogue, healthy debate. Rick Glacer knew. When I brought up Crawford and how ESPN allowed their fighters to fight once a year, he knew the pressure was cooked. He knew the air fryer was on him. I was on his helmet. He did all that talking crazy and jumped off. I ain't them. I don't know whoever YouTube people he do that with. Ain't nobody going to come on my platform and play games with me like that. He ain't want to answer the phone. Yeah. Yeah, we don't, we don't play. You know what I mean? He texted me telling me I'll call you back. That's some right there, so I'll call you back. No. You ran off the drone, dog. Don't run off, don't talk crazy to me and run off the run off the live. 
Yeah, I'll come see you. We can talk like men. That way nobody can't hang up on nobody. Yeah. You see, I, I respect my elders. My mom raised me right to respect my elders. Because the man, like, how old is this guy? 60-something or something like that? You can't come disrespect me, then get out of pocket, and then go and run. Oh, uh, I man, I'm not dumb, y'all. I try to be respectful, professional, and I apologize for messing this whole thing up, y'all, because I want, I have the viewership. The viewership is increasing exponentially. I got thousands of people watching me right now live in Living Color, and more are going to watch the replay of this live. And y'all just seen this dude. This dude, man. Man, that was some sucker stuff, man. That was, I was I was just warming up on him too. Like, ah man. Then he gonna run. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, where they do that at, y'all? Grown men acting like this. Where they do this at? You know what? I get it now. People keep asking me, who do I manage? The answers is right before y'all. I managed to get grown men to act like that. He ain't the first one. He ain't the first one. And, the, and, and guess what? All the ones that know what time it is is watching me live right now. I, I don't play no YouTube games. I mean, he, he ain't had to disrespect me like that. I was being respectful to the man. I let the man introduce his own self. You know, I never cut the man off. At least I tried not to. And the man going, you know what I mean? I ain't complaining. We men, but... Don't go calling me stupid and cursing at me and he gonna run off the joint. Man, we, I don't play the game out, man. Listen, I don't play on YouTube like that. I don't play like that. I'm just saying we had a good thing going on right now. We, you know, I mean, the viewership is here. Everybody's here. The, the chat, you know, is engaging. You know what I mean? I don't know if it's because Rick Glaser's wife is black or he's close with the black community. I don't know if he think, you know what I mean, he can, you know, be comfortable to do that, but just don't do that no more, Rick. I know you're still watching me, dog. Don't do that no more, man. Don't do that. I'm, I'm glad we wasn't in person, brother, because we we talk like men, man. We don't, you know what I mean? Don't don't do that. Don't do that, man. Don't do that, man. We I'm being respectful, man. Don't please don't do that, man. We we had this thing going on right now. The view the viewership is here. Let me get these super chats real quick, man, because y'all he just messed up the flow, everything. Everything was going well. We was having a healthy dialogue. I start bringing up top rank and the same tactics that he was accusing PBC and every other promoter of, uh, with, with Crawford and other fighters, they all do the same thing. Every fighter fight once a year. It ain't no, it ain't no, oh, champions supposed to fight three times a year. No world champions don't fight no three times a year. The whole point of fighting three, four times a year in this business is as a prospect. So you won't have to put your body into so much sacrificing two, three times a year. Fighting two times a year, nothing wrong with it. We've seen Ryan Garcia do it with Tank Davis, and we've seen Tank Davis do it with Hector Garcia. He fought twice a year in a matter of, what, 90 days or whatnot? No big deal. It happens. We've seen Floyd Mayweather fight McDonough twice in one year. It happens. But don't no real world-class Elite level fighters fight no three times a, a year, not no world champions. The whole purpose of being a champion is so that you don't have to fight three times a year. You know what I mean? And when I start bringing up the fact that other promoters follow the same thing, you know why? Because manager Marty knows that the boxing contracts in this business are standard all across the world and all across the United States of America. He know I know that. And he know that's exactly where I was going at with the language and the contract. He knew that's where I was going. Y'all didn't know. He knew what I was, where I was going. That old, that old head don't want no work with me. 40 years of experience or not. G-Man, if you here, you can come up here and you can come finish this for your man, G-Man. Because I know you in here somewhere. You the one that tried to set me up with this, this, this guy here. Come on up here and finish, finish your man, your man running. He's, he put his tail between his legs and ran. We supposed to be men, and he ran. You know what I mean? Let me get these super chats. My man Rye, what's up, G's? My guy, let's get it, brother. Salute to my man Rodney. Let me digress for a minute. My man Rodney, thank you for your support and contribution to the channel. I love all the viewership that's watching me live and living color. Let me stop right now before I get to the other super chats. I have women all across the world. 
They watching this gentleman walk all smooth, talk all smooth. And I appreciate all the women that's watching me live in Living Color right now and have supported this channel, have made contributions and investments with your time and your financial resources. So I want to stop my whole show and say to all the ladies out there, thank you for supporting the sport of boxing and thank you for equally supporting this channel and this podcast. Thank you very much. Money Magic, thank you for your contribution to the channel. Money Magic said, Marty, thank you for your content, bro. Keep shedding light on the business of boxing and doing interviews like these. I certainly will, Money Magic. Absolutely. Tashi, thank you for your contribution to the channel and your support as always. Tashi says, ask him why he is so worried about PBC. Tashi, I tried to ask the guy, why don't you just go over there and just work for PBC? You know more about PBC's financial business. You know more about how much their fighters get paid. You know how many fights they, they have lined up and promoted every year. Your mom's will go work with them. Because it sounds like Rick, Rick Glazer is either bitter or obsessed with the practices of PBC. All the fighters over there at PBC, and we know this to be a fact, all of them make way more money than everybody else, whether it be Golden Boy fighters and top rank. We already know that to be true. It don't matter if they fight once a year, two times, or three times a year. The discrepancy comes in is because those fighters over there, they get to fight once a year or every 14 months. And guess what? They get a big bag for it compared to a fighter over at top rank or somewhere else being promoted, got to fight two, three times a year and still don't make as much as the PBC fighters. We got to call a spade a spade and deal with what's real. You know what I mean? Mr. Pragmatic, thank you for your support and your contribution to the channel. Who told Rick that Jermel wasn't going to fight for $750,000? Who's giving him this information? Well, Mr. Prag, I asked him, how do you know that, um, you know, Charlo was offered $750 from Al Heyman and Steven Espinosa in Showtime? How do you know that? His answer was, y'all heard him, Jamal or Jamel, one of the Charlo brothers actually said that. I don't remember or recall hearing none of the brothers say, say that. So. Maybe somebody in the chat can enlighten me and you at the same time, Mr. Pragmatic. Tashi, thank you for your contribution again. He's a coward. You're absolutely correct. He know what time it is. Where he knew where I was going with it. He got 40 years in the business, right? Or 32 years in the business, whatever the case might be. He knew exactly where I was going. He saw the setup. He see I was laying the foundation. He see I was laying building blocks. And he knew exactly where the end result was going to be. Just like when I interview everybody else that come on this panel. Dion, thank you for your contribution and your support to the channel. Marty, you are a gentleman and a scholar. Much love and respect to you, Dion. You are one of my day one supporters. And I really appreciate your contribution and your time that you invest week in and week out on the Roller Tape Film Crew um, uh, environment. For the podcast. Thank you. My guy, main man, pots and pan, Chris Lee. Thank you for your contribution and your support to the channel. Chris, always a pleasure. My brother, Chris said, you put the, <laughs> you put the heat on the old man. Yes, I did. And he knew what time it was. The air fryer was warming up. I had him. Hey, you know, you know, this is what people do when they know the truth was coming out. They start having temper tantrums, right? And they start throwing other side tricks in there and cursing and yelling. All of that is a tactic to distract the truth from being revealed. And then they do all of that just to turn around and leave. Interesting to me. My guy, DC Jeroy, who was just on the channel earlier on my panel, he kept his word and came right back. I appreciate you, DC. Thank you for your contribution and your support to the channel. DC Jeroy says, he's mad, Brother Marty. He wants to converse the messed up, oh, excuse me, he wants to conserve, put my glasses on. He wants to conserve the messed up power structure that robbed many fighters. You can't overpay someone who's doing all the labor unless we're talking about slavery. Absolutely. And he knew that's where I was going at, DC Jeroy. For the last 40, 50 years, uh, fighters 
have been being underpaid in this business and they're still being underpaid according to the fair market value. And I'm gonna give you an example of that when I'm done with these super chats so that Rick Glaser can stop lying and trying to act like the business is all ruined because fighters is getting their just pay. Aaron H. Muhammad, thank you so much for your contribution to the channel. Thank you for your support. As always, one of my day one supporters, Aaron says, Manager Marty, that was cowardly. He did not respect your knowledge and was agitated by your direct questions. He had the N-word on the tip of his tongue. Well, I don't have any evidence of that, and I hope he wouldn't. I hope he didn't have that on his tongue. But I can't prove that as evidence. But Aaron Mates Muhammad, I recognize your super chat. Thank you and salute to you as well. Intelligent Savage, thank you for your contribution and your support to the channel. Intelligent Savage says, Manager Marty, excellent job as always. Now that's how you cut the ring off on the guy. Left him nowhere to go. Salute, salute, salute. Hey, Intelligent Savage. Even Terrence Bar Crawford fans that's watching me live in living color know when I back you in the corner and you got nowhere to go, when I'm very direct with you, there's only two ways you can turn, yes or no. And Rick Glaser, he's seen that heat coming. You, yeah, you got to call it what it is. He's seen that heat coming. He knew I was backing him down. He knew what time it was. You know what I mean? But, hey, it is what it is. Mr. Vegas. What's going on, Mr. Vegas? Me and Mr. Vegas met, speaking of Vegas, when I was in Vegas. Walk right up on me. Salute to you, Mr. Vegas. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your contribution. Mr. Vegas says, now he know why they call him Manager Marty. Absolutely. And I was just about to roll the tape on him because I wanted to play something. But since I have the viewership right now, let me give you all some education so that you all can understand why why I was talking about fighters not getting paid their just due and the fair market value. I'm going to give you an example so y'all can understand where I'm going with this. This is not to put nobody name out there. I'm still protecting the integrity of the business, but I'm going to keep it all the way you're hunted. Now, I was advising and representing a professional boxer. True story. A promoter offered my client at the time a contract. I reviewed the contract. I evaluated the contract thoroughly. The contract is basically the standard contract in business that have not changed. That's a fact. Now, because I know that already. I went back to the promoter to negotiate on the fighter's behalf, my client at the time. I told the promoter, if you want my fighter to fight under your promotional banner for three years, which is standard in boxing and or when the boxer wins a state title, regional title, and or world title, the contract automatically extends. If you want my fighter to be signed under these conditions in terms of this contract, according to economics and the fair market value, you're going to have to change the language and the numbers. The promoter asked me, Marty, why? No, sorry. He didn't say Marty. He said Martel. Why? I said for this very reason. Because the numbers we see in this contract are for today. And those numbers will remain the same. Ask any boxer. They'll tell you what I'm talking about is true. Those numbers that are represented as compensation for these fighters, particularly my client at the time, is going to stay the same year after year that this fighter, my client at the time, was signed to these conditions. The problem with that is, 
In two years, the price of eggs are going to increase. In three years, the price of fuel is going to increase. There is no cost of living allowance or increase. So if you want a fighter to get paid X amount of dollars, while the economics is evolving around this fighter, but you still want to pay the fighter the same amount that he or she was getting paid three years ago, there's a problem with that. And of course, at that time, the promoter did not want to revise the language or the numbers in the contract. And Rick Glazer knows that's exactly where I was going. When we talk about the fair market value, a good advisor, a good manager studies economics and the fair market value. You can't pay my fighter X amount of dollars in 2024 that you pay another fighter under your promotional banner eight years ago. Where they do that at? You got fighters right now fighting eight round fights, making X amount of dollars. I'm not going to say the number. As if they were six round fighters. This is facts. Can't nobody refute what I'm saying. And if they do, they better come with a real contract to refute what I'm saying. I got in this business, like I just told Rick, to protect the interests of all professional boxers. So when somebody tells me fighters are getting overpaid, what do you think they're supposed to get paid then? If they're getting overpaid, what do you think they should get paid because it's surely not the fair market value according to the contracts that standard around this business we got to be fair to all fighters it don't make no difference what their record is and that's why i got in this business and rick glazer or nobody else is going to sit up here and undermine the compensation for fighters who's getting punched in the face who's sacrificing their time let me tell y'all something real quick because he got me hot now you have local fighters, regional fighters, even, even fighters that don't have a world championship title around their waist, that's decorated amateurs, that got winning records right now as we speak that you see on TV, and they got a second job somewhere. Let's talk about it. They work somewhere else, which reduces their time in the gym to train. Let's talk about it. I'm talking about fighters you see on TV. If the language was right, if the numbers were favorable, not to the promoters, but to the fighters, maybe they would have more time to work on their craft because they're not working at UPS. They're not working at this job. They're not working over there, laboring over there at a job because they're trying to make ends meet and overcompensate. You understand what I'm talking about? That's why I got in this business. And Rick Glazer knew exactly where I was going. Chill, Jamal. You in the chat talking about apologize to Crawford. Apologize to Crawford for what? I'm the one that told Bob Crawford in December of 2020 that if Bob Aram is standing in the way for you to get compensated, the fair market value, don't resign with him. And guess what happened a year later when his contract was up? He did not resign with them. He did not resign with them. I'm not saying he listened to me. My point is, we know what time it is. Let me put this right up here so you can understand that I'm not just no Jack Lay manager. I know what I'm talking about. You don't have to take my word for it. Take the word from a manager who has managed and represented a Hall of Fame four-time world champion. Rachel Donier, who's in the chat, is, is on her screen. Look at look at the, what's on your screen. What did she tell y'all? You ain't got to take my word for it. I'm going to read it out loud, Rachel. I need my glasses. Salute to you, Rachel. I appreciate you. I didn't even know you was here, Rachel. No, Nito used to be paid $100 a round. Facts. Facts. I'm not mad at promoters making money. This is the, Listen, ain't nobody in the business to lose money now. What I'm saying is pay the fighters a little bit more. These fighters got kids, they got bills, they got families. And guess what? When the fighter's contract is not right. Guess who got to pay for their expenses? 
Guess who got to pay for their training expenses? Guess who has to pay for their travel? Let's talk about it. You've guessed it, the managers. Huh? Y'all didn't know that, did y'all? The managers. So what I'm saying is, if the manager got to lose money, if the fighter can't make the money according to the fair market value in our economic system, then there's only one person at the table making money. Where they do that at? Everybody's supposed to win in business and everybody's supposed to lose in business. It's called compromise. That's all I'm saying. Salute to you. My man is in here. I just seen him. You know, I always salute and welcome all the content creators. My man, KQKC Boxing Network. Salute to you, KQ. Thank you for the encouraging words, my brother. Now, I ain't trying to get emotional or not. I'm definitely not an emotional person. But Rick got me hot, not because he was cursing at me. I don't care about none of that. Not because he ran. I don't care. It's because he's trying to make it seem like fighters getting paid or overcompensated is a problem. These men and women dedicate their lives. Now, let's use somebody like a Tank Davis and Errol Spence. Let's use Tank Davis. Tank Davis on top right now. You know Tank Davis put over 20 years in his business to get to where he got to? You know how much money Coach Cowan Ford and them had to lose to help this young man get to where he got to? You know how much a manager got to lose as far as money to get these fighters to where the level of a Tank Davis got to get to? Y'all don't understand. That's why I'm, and Rick understands that. Tank Davis been fighting since he was like seven or eight years old. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, he was a kid if I don't got his age right. But he was seven or eight years old. The man's almost 30 now. The man put in over 25 years, blood, sweat, and tears to be where he is today. You know how many uh, meals he had to lose out on that he couldn't afford? Come on, let's talk about it. We know Tank Davis from Baltimore, the hood. He ain't have it easy. <clears throat> so when somebody tells me <clears throat> Al Heyman overpaid these fighters, what that got to do with you? So what? And that's why they had to take money from Showtime. So what? Top rank get money from ESPN. So what? What difference do it make? All the promoters go to the network to get the bag. We know how the business is. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Now the man's going to insult me. I'm going to show you all the text message. I'm going to show you all the text, what he said. I'm going to show you what the man said. <clears throat> Yeah, you ain't you ain't answering my phone though. You I called him and he ain't answer. Left him a voicemail, he didn't answer. He didn't answer the phone. So he can say what he just texted me. I'm gonna show y'all what the man said. Y'all can take y'all. Let me let me remove this comment and show you where we this with this where YouTube at, y'all. This where it boil down to. Y'all want to know who I manage, right? I managed to get people to get all in their feelings. I know that. Grown men, too. I never disrespected this guy or insulted him. And y'all know it. Salute my guy, Philly Fight Doctor. Let me show y'all what the man said to me on the text message. Let me show it to y'all. Y'all see that? Well, I got to be all that. I ain't never insult the brother. I pay respect to the man. He's, he's the elder in the business. And he's my elder in real life. He's my, he's probably old enough to be my father. I don't know. Damn. What's all this about? Damn. Hey, dog. Let me make sure y'all see that correctly. Wow. That's what YouTube boil down to. Oh, you can't read it, Rachel. Y'all can't see it. Man, I don't know what's going on. Let me play that. Let me see. Let me show y'all that again. Hold on. Let you see that? Let me see if I can turn it sideways. Yeah, that's what the man said. Why that man is feeling like that? Dang, let me see if y'all can see the long way. There it go, the long way. 
Damn. That's what it boiled down to on YouTube? Damn. Damn. Damn, that's what man Jamardi do with these guys? Oh, man. And I'm glad that brother wasn't in my face. I'm glad because we would have had a whole different conversation, man. Like men, you know, you know what I mean. You know, like men. You gotta be respectful, man. We got ladies all in the chat. All the ladies is viewing us live. I've been nothing but a gentleman. The men is, yeah, man, it's crazy. Man. Well, I'll tell you what. I hope that y'all just learned something, at least in the last 30 seconds that I told y'all about standard contracts in business, how the fighters are underpaid sometimes, according to the fair market value in our economic system here in America. Rachel Donier even pointed out that, you know, fight, you know, No Nito got paid $100 a round, right? You want somebody to lock into a contract for three years, getting paid $100 a round for four rounds, six rounds, eight rounds, 10 rounds, and then the tad bit more when there's a TV camera? Come on. And then in three years, or at least two and a half years, or at least two years when y'all trying to re-sign a person, they still stuck in that same contract? When economics has evolved? And the fighter's electric bill has increased exponentially? When they do that, that ain't good business. I would not be representing any clients of mine properly if I let that slide. I'm just saying. So, yes, a lot of people may have a problem with me, but it's not about me. It's not about how much Rick Glacier think these fighters should get paid. It's about the fighters. I represent the fighters. And so do Al Heyman and PBC. I don't work for PBC. I don't work for Al Heyman. I'm not even speaking for them. I'm just saying if a guy hates what they're doing and they're still successful at it, what's the problem? Okay, he blew through money and overpaid the fighters. What they got to do with Rick Gleason? Nothing. And guess what? They went and got a check from Showtime and the fighters are still making money. And that's what it's all about. That's all I'm saying. Before I let y'all go, I just want to ask you a question. Were you entertained tonight? At least. Hit the like button, please. Subscribe to the channel. You've never seen nothing like this before. Nowhere else. But you're seeing it right here live in living color. And you know what? As much time as I have tomorrow, we're going to see. I will be back here tomorrow. Live in living color. I don't have a time right now. But I'm going to keep producing content for y'all. I do this for y'all. I'll be right back here live in living color. On another episode of Roll the Tape Podcast with Manager Marty. I just want to know, though, real quick. I just want to know, were y'all entertained? Let me show my face. You know, I show, I show mine. I show mine. But y'all entertained tonight? Seriously, I'm going to calm down, relax. Were y'all entertained tonight? Did y'all learn anything about the business? Did you learn anything about the sports, something? How about this part, the beginning part? Were you all here for the beginning part? Hey, y'all remember that movie Bad Boys with Will Smith and, and Martin Lawrence? Remember when Will Smith kept telling Martin, yo, you got to drive this thing fast. This ain't no Cadillac. Drive this thing. And Martin was a little hesitant, you know. And then when the next scene came, Will Smith got behind the wheel. And he was gunning that thing. He was pushing that vehicle to the limit. And you know what he did? He turned to Martin and he said, from now on, that's how you're supposed to drive. What I'm basically saying is in the beginning, if you missed it, go back and watch the replay of this beginning. From now on, when there are boxing debates on this channel, on this platform, 
That's how you're going to see boxing debates. Referee, timekeeper, and ring announcer. It's never been done before in the history of YouTube, not on the boxing community anyway. We make history on this channel. We do things unique over here. But from now on, any debates on this channel, and I don't, I don't have a channel to do debates, but I'm just saying every now and then, I got to put the gloves on and rough people up on YouTube, y'all, on YouTube. But that's how you're going to get authentic, real-life experience as if I was a fighter professionally and the guest. So if you missed the beginning of this, go back and watch the replay of the beginning. We had a professional boxing ring announcer. We had the referee. We had a licensed professional timekeeper. Ring the bell. It was awesome. And that's, I just want to make sure y'all were entertained. I did that for entertainment purposes, y'all. I don't want to make sure y'all were entertained. I'm not going to hold you all too long. I appreciate all the contributions, all the support to the channel, all of your viewership live and living color. And for those that are going to watch the replay of this live, I appreciate your viewers, your viewership. And I look forward to seeing each and every last one of you. I don't know the time yet, but tomorrow we'll be right back here live in living color on another episode of Roll the Tape Podcast with Manager Marty. The viewership has increased in exponentially, and I would hate to let you go, but I did a live earlier. I did a live today. I don't want to overstay my welcome with you all. Much love and respect to each and every last one of you, even if you don't agree with me and even if you, even if you don't like me. I appreciate you coming over and showing me love and support. I'm Manager Marty, and y'all know what I'm going to always tell y'all to do. Don't take my word for it. Roll the tape.